well, today we went on a bus tour and we looked at urban and agricultural conservation practices, water quality practices. Um, so we started out at the Moss Family Farm and we looked at some uh, bioreactor inlet structures that um, infiltrate uh, farm water runoff uh, through structures that involve mulch. Um, and that mulch um, and pea gravel influence help remove um, nitrates and phosphorus within um, the stormwater or within the agricultural runoff. Um, we talked with Art Bettis of the University of Iowa about the critical zone observatory and some of the research that he's doing out there. With the uh, IML CZO, the integrated or excuse me, intensively managed landscape CZO, uh, we're um, doing a lot of research at three uh, sites, uh, Clear Creek Basin being one of them, and the other one in Sangamon River Basin, and then in Minnesota. And at Clear Creek, we have a, a large observatory, weathering zone observatory, set up at uh, the Moss Farm, where we went on the trip. And at the Moss, Moss Farm, we've been uh, looking at things for about, this will be our third year. Uh, we've got uh, wells in, we're monitoring the groundwater levels, we're also monitoring levels in deeper uh, sands and gravels, water in deeper sands and gravels. Um, we're looking at how nutrients are moving through those systems. We're also looking at how the deposits themselves are weathering in the long term and how agricultural land use might be affecting that, that weathering in the long run. We also have a, a lot of other sort of uh, sensors at the site, uh, environmental sensors for weather, for soil moisture, soil temperature. Um, we're, our site there is, is linked up with other sites in the basin and uh, we're um, able to look at how basically water is moving water and energy and carbon are moving through the landscape from the surface up high on the landscape down the slopes into the floodplain and also in the subsurface and that's really uh, one of the main thrusts of our research uh, in this IML CZO as far as uh, linking the, the surface processes that are taking place both erosion, uh, water infiltration, uh, weather patterns with what's going on deep and then how that all affects the surface waters and the shallow groundwater. After that, I guess we hit up Kent Park, had a little lunch and talked with the Johnson County um, Conservation Board, um, specifically Brad Friedhoff, about what Johnson County has been doing um, in terms of conservation, land acquisition, and what they plan to do um, with their lake. Uh, the second site that we visited was the Coral Ridge Avenue Road Reconstruction Project. And this is a project that took a two-lane road, converted it to a four-lane road, and used green stormwater infrastructure versus gray stormwater infrastructure. So instead of using large pipes to transport stormwater runoff to the nearest creek, we used bioretention cells and swales to infiltrate that, the water that comes off that section of roadway. So 100% of the stormwater that comes off this section of roadway is infiltrated and treated in these cells. What we're finding is about 20% of the water entering the cells is getting um, converted into groundwater recharge. So that's a 20% volume reduction that we're seeing. Um, we've been monitoring the, these cells and swales with the University of Iowa and IIHR and we hope to see greater reductions over time as the plants go, gr grow and, um, and mature. Um, one of my favorite things about this project is really being able to see um, when you, the, both the preventative and the positive impact that these engineered systems can have on the environment. Anytime you have water being conveyed from one place to another, you pick up all of the pollutants along the way, whether that's coming out of a tile drain or flowing over an impervious surface. And so right now, the systems don't have enough established vegetation to really say a lot about the pollutant removal capacity, but just being able to see how much of the top of the hydrograph we're taking off and how much volume infiltration we're getting in the system is really reassuring. So we found that the Clear Creek bus tour was um, really went off without a hitch. Everything was really seamless. We had a lot of ag people and a lot of urban people. And so I think Amy and Art were both really happy. Yeah, the uh, overall, the uh, field trip was uh, really uh, an interesting uh, trip because we had both people who spend most of their time in uh, the rural setting, farmers and uh, a lot of the uh, people from uh, farm management agencies and uh, that sort of stuff. And we also had a lot of people from who spend most of their time in urban settings, um, the st urban stormwater people, um, 
people who live in the city. Uh, and uh, it was a really great thing. I got several good comments from both farmers as well as people living in the urban settings that they thought it was really cool that they'd never been to these other places and talked about these issues and they had all these commonalities uh, that were, were being addressed in different sorts of ways but in some, t in some cases in the same ways and that um, basically the, the feeling that it's all one basin that's all linked together whether you're in an urban or a rural setting. And, that's one of the things with the, the IMLCZO. Um, our focus is primarily on the agricultural land use of the landscape, but we uh, also look at um, environmental gradients. And one of the environmental gradients that we have in this uh, CZO is a, a rural to urban gradient that goes from the uh, upper part of the basin into Coralville, which is urban in the lower part of the basin. And that's why, although the, the CZO is not funding directly the research at uh, the Coral Ridge Avenue on the urban stormwater and the green infrastructure, uh, we're very deeply involved in it and we're using that data and we consider it to be part of the overall project looking at how intensive land use, in this case urban land use, is affecting the critical zone. I think another bus tour like this would be great. It'd be a, it, it, I think it'd be really nice to have it at the end of the five-year project where we've got more data, more time that we've actually analyzed data, have some results that we can really talk about in more detail and to both with the city of Coralville with the monitoring of, of their green infrastructure too. I think it would be sort of a good you know, contrast and comparison of what we knew then and what we know then and, uh, and where we are and where we're going with the information that we've gathered.